Good morning, folks. Welcome back to the farm. We're in the kitchen again today. We wanted to do a little something special because you got the holidays coming up. And we're going to make some dips, some of my favorite things, when we're waiting for dinner to get done. So come back, stay here with us, and we'll show you how to make them. Now, during the holidays, I always love for people to come over a little bit early and you got to kind of have something for them to snack on uh, when they're milling around waiting for the big meal to happen and they're visiting. So I like to have some hors d'oeuvres around, some dips and stuff like that. And I'm going to share with you some of my favorite dips that we would put together for these holidays. Now, before we get started, I want to tell you something about really something really exciting. One of our most loyal subscribers, if you remember her, Linda, she won the uh, the subscriber giveaway here a while back. She started her own YouTube channel. It's called Easy Cooking with Linda. Super exciting. Go check her channel out and give her some love. She made some Italian chicken soup that looked phenomenal. I'm definitely going to try that. So go check her out. Really good video. Just watched it this morning. So let's get with our first dip. One of my favorite dips of all time is clam dip. And I know for some of you that may not sound appealing, but this stuff is phenomenal. I would use usually just camp out close by with this stuff and just eat way too much of it. Let's get after it. First thing you're going to start with is a block of cream cheese, and it's softened. And if you don't remember to soften your cream cheese, just throw it in the microwave for 30 seconds, and it'll get pretty soft for you. So this is pretty much a dump in and mix recipe. It's pretty easy. So to your one block of cream cheese, you're going to add a can, like a tuna can size of clams. And these are chopped clams, and you're going to keep the juice in it as well. And then to that, we're going to add a dash of what's this here sauce. And then we're going to add a dash of black pepper. And then one tablespoon of lemon juice. And I use this lemon juice because we can't grow citrus here in Nebraska. And then we're going to do one dash of Tabasco, but I prefer Frank's. Red Hot is my favorite, and one teaspoon of horseradish. This is a very special horseradish that we found at our local store. It's called Yoder's. Fantastic horseradish. I could almost eat this stuff with a spoon. It's not super crazy where it blows up your sinuses, but it's got a fantastic flavor. So we're going to throw all this stuff in the bowl, and we'll come back when we're ready to mix it. Now when you're adding liquid to your cream cheese, I break up my cream cheese first. And I don't add all the liquid, I'll just splash a little bit in there. And just like dry ingredients, it's much better if you start with a little bit of liquid, it's much easier to mix in. If you have too much liquid in here, the cream cheese is going to want to stay in clumps. So we're going to start with this amount and we're going to whip it up pretty good before we get uh, going with any more of the liquid in this ingredient. We've got the rest of our ingredients in our dip. If you're not sure what a dash is, that's about what it looks like. I actually got a measuring spoon for a dash, a tad, a smidgen, all those different uh, measurements. Pretty cool, right? Made by Norpro. You can find those on Amazon. But I just put a dash in there. I don't measure it. I think those spoons I got are kind of more of a novelty thing than anything else. So we're mixing our dip up. This dip may look a little watery to you, but when you put it in the fridge, which I highly recommend you do, because you don't want watery dip, when that cream cheese um, starts hardening up again a little bit, this dip's going to get a lot thicker. You can serve it just like this, but it'll be just a little messy. But uh, put her in the fridge. Now this dip is basically done minus its time in the fridge. Now, my mom, this was one of her recipes years ago, she would make something similar called crab dip. Now, crab dip 
basically had all the same ingredients. You would use a can of crab, but you wouldn't use the Worcestershire sauce. Uh, there was no pepper in it. And it also had two tablespoons of mayonnaise in it. Uh, everything else was still the same. Um, I think because the crab meat is a lot more delicate flavor, you didn't want bit as big of bold flavors in the dip. But uh, the crab dip was really good too. So there's you a second recipe that is very similar. So I'm going to put this clam dip in the fridge. And then we're going to start on our next dip recipe that I really enjoy. Now, my next dip recipe is another one of my favorites. It's an onion dip. And I don't mean the little glass jar that you buy in the chip aisle. If you've ever had homemade onion dip, you'll never buy that glass jar again. I know we were all raised on that stuff. But this is so much better. Take my word for it. So in our skillet, we've got two tablespoons of butter, two tablespoons of oil. I'm just using a good kind of a light olive oil. And we've also got one large yellow onion that we're going to saute. So let's get the fire going here. So we're going to heat this up and we'll throw our onion in and then we're going to go down to like a very low simmer and we're going to let these onions cook really slow and caramelize. Butter is melted, skillet's heated up, in go the onions. I got it on high right now just to get things going. Once the onions turn translucent, we're going to turn our heat down to low. Our onions have been simmering for about 10 minutes. It's on low, it's as low as our fire will go. You can see we're starting to get some color. Now cooking onions is a lot like cooking sugar when you're making like candy or toffee or something like that. It won't start to turn brown or they won't start to turn brown until you lose a lot of the moisture that is in the onions. So go low and slow and uh, you'll have a lot better outcome. Okay, it's been literally 45 minutes we've been cooking these onions on low. You see we've got plenty of color. We haven't burnt anything. And you will notice that the smell coming out of your pan is noticeably different. Now you're getting a beautiful sweet aroma instead of that nasty green pungent aroma that you get at first. So we're turning the fire off on these and now as soon as this stops sizzling we're going to go ahead and add our spices into this because this oil is going to kind of wake up those spices. Now to that onion mixture you're going to add a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper, a half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of pepper, and a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder. And then you're going to stir that into that warm onion mixture and that smell coming up off of that is just going to be amazing. You're going to love it. And then continue to let that cool to room temperature. So we've got another block of softened cream cheese. And to this you're going to add a quarter cup of sour cream and a quarter cup of really good mayonnaise. I highly recommend if you're measuring thick items like this get one of these measuring cups they're super cool they got a little plunger where once you measure the amount you just push the plunger and everything comes out you don't have to dig it out and half of it stays in your measuring cup works pretty good all right we've got all of our dip base mixed together our cream cheese sour cream and mayo so now we're going to dump our room temperature onion mixture into that and stir it up Cut it all out. Make sure you use a spatula because you want every bit of those spices and everything out of there. We've got it mixed together. And then this one here doesn't really need to set. The flavors will come together better if you do let it set. Now if you keep this in the fridge like uh, making it the day before and putting it in the fridge overnight, if this gets too thick, when you take it out of the refrigerator you can stir in a little bit of milk a little bit at a time, not a lot until it's the right consistency to thin it down if you want to because this will tighten up in the fridge. But uh, that's all there is to that dip right there. Now when you taste this onion dip, you're not going to believe 
how good that is. You're going to wonder where that recipe's been all your life. And if you serve that at a party, I guarantee you're going to be sending that recipe home with everybody. So we've got those two dips. I gave you that third one. Remember the crab dip. Now, one other dip I really enjoy at parties is a spinach dip. But I'm not going to do that one for you because the recipe is already out there. Um, if you buy the Knorr soup mix, K-N-O-R-R, -R, and I believe it's the vegetable soup mix, but don't quote me on that. Usually the recipe is on that package. And there is recipes out there that don't call for the soup package, which I haven't tried them, but I'm sure they're good. But uh, with that recipe made as it is on the package, I really don't think you could improve on that. It's really good. And that's another dip that I just camp out by. It's crazy. I think I'm a dip stalker. Whenever these dips come around, I just camp out by these dips with that bag of chips. So now, let's talk about chips. Now, if you're going to serve these dips, you need a chip that's going to hold up. Not necessarily this brand. But get the good wavy chips because those will hold up to your dip and they won't break off in your dip. So grab you a little dip on your chip there. Mmm. So good. You can taste that sweet onion. Really, really good dip. Again, so much better than that stuff in the glass jar. Let's go for some of this clam dip. Get the chip out of here. Hasn't been in the fridge very long, but still pretty good. Mmm. Wow, I'm going to be in heaven around here. We're going to be eating chips and dip for dinner tonight, I think. <laughs> All right, folks. Hope you've enjoyed these videos. I hope you try them. I think you're going to be very pleasantly surprised that especially that clam dip brings back a lot of memories for me. We're going to be uh, having some of that for sure. So until next time, stay safe, stay healthy. We love you guys. If we don't talk to you again before the Thanksgiving holiday, uh, we hope you have a wonderful time with your family and uh, make that most out of that holiday. It's always a good holiday because families get together. And it's all about food. What better holiday than one, than one that's about food? So, love you guys. Catch you on the next one.